Okay, I'm sorry, but this is really creepy. Like, Beyonce has been trying to write me out of my own narrative for, like, years at this point. Like, this is... So is Beyonce really out here stealing from artists? But they just couldn't do it like Tofu Tofu. I said, I have to have those young guys fly to wherever we are, and they have to teach us the choreography. Ain't nobody gonna want us to go to their shows, Frank. Why? Because we're going to take everything. <laughs> say, hey, great show. And then still it. <laughs> so Beyonce's catching heat for supposedly jacking choreography in her video for Countdown. And guess what? This ain't the first rodeo for Queen Bay. She's been accused of copying moves before. Her latest album, Four, is getting extra shade for rumors of lifting ideas. What's the deal, Bay? Beyonce has undeniably risen to superstardom over the past two decades, transitioning from Destiny's Child to an awe-inspiring solo career. Her journey to the pinnacle of the music industry is nothing short of remarkable. Yet, with fame comes scrutiny, and Queen Bey isn't immune to it. Her success has also brought along a fair share of claims that she copied or stole from others. In fact, a choreographer from a certain show even took to Instagram to call her out. Seems like with all the glitter, there's also a bit of drama in Beyoncé's stardom. Throughout her whole career, Beyoncé, the singer-songwriter extraordinaire, has been all about references. Whether it's sneaky Easter eggs tucked into her lyrics or tipping her hat to the icons she admires, the single lady sensation is all about pushing the boundaries to craft unique and artistic visuals. One, two, three, four. Next. Yet, as it often goes with great artists, not everyone's a fan of her take on things. She's stirred up some controversy lately for her Renaissance stage performances and artwork that seems to echo the fembots created by Japanese artist Hajime Sorayama. In 2011, Beyonce dropped her single Countdown as part of the Four Inches album. However, the music video stirred up quite the storm due to its striking similarities to the work of Belgian choreographer Anne Teresa de Kiersmaker. De Kiersmaker didn't hold back, expressing her displeasure openly. She stated to Studio Brussels, I'm not mad, but this is plagiarism. This is stealing. The controversy surrounding the video brought attention to the fine line between inspiration and imitation in the world of artistic expression. According to De Kiersmaker, Beyoncé drew heavily from her works Octorland from 1990 and Roses Danced Roses from 1983. Beyond the dance moves, De Kiersmaker pointed out similarities in costumes, set design, and even specific shots from Thierry DeMay's film on Roses Danced Roses. Expressing her frustration, De Kiersmaker remarked, It's a bit rude. What's rude about it is that they don't even bother about hiding it. In response, Beyoncé acknowledged the inspiration in a statement saying, Clearly, the ballet Roses Danced Roses was one of many references for my video countdown. It was one of the inspirations used to bring the feel and look of the song to life. Beyoncé also mentioned that she drew inspiration from various other artists for the video. I was also paying tribute to the film Funny Face with the legendary Audrey Hepburn, she continued. My biggest inspirations were the 60s, the 70s, Brigitte Bardot, Andy Warhol, Twiggy, and Diana Ross. Beyoncé added, I've always been fascinated by the way contemporary art uses different elements and references to produce something unique. Following Beyoncé's statement, De Kiersmaker wrote a letter which was posted on the Studio Brussels website. Beyoncé is not the worst copycat. She sings and dances very well, and she has a good taste, she wrote. On the other hand, there are protocols and consequences to such actions, and I can't imagine she and her team are not aware of it. De Kiersmaker also said her choreography felt out of place within a pop music video. In the 1980s, this was seen as a statement of girl power, based on assuming a feminine stance on S expression, she wrote. I was often asked then if it was feminist. Now that I see Beyonce dancing it, I find it pleasant, but I don't see any edge to it. It's seductive in an entertaining consumerist way. In 2016, Beyoncé was under fire again for allegedly stealing from another artist. Choreographer Marlon Oritz took to Instagram to accuse Beyoncé of stealing moves from her troupe's show De La Guarda. I'm sorry I don't bash artist, but I respect fellow creative artist and don't like to use social media to promote something that can be perceived as negativity. Oritz began her Instagram caption, Beyoncé, you have the nerve to steal exact concepts and choreography from other real creative geniuses. She continued, You stole from Breaking Surface, you stole the stomping from Hash de la Guarda Fuerza Brutonic. It's okay to be inspired, but at least make the effort to make it your own. However, Beyoncé has still received criticism even when giving credit and making something her own.
On the Renaissance track Energy, Beyonce used an interpolation of the song Milkshake by Kelly's. Towards the end of the song, Beyonce sings the familiar la 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 part of Milkshake. However, the new version of the song has removed those vocals from the track due to Kellis's disapproval. Kellis is not credited as a producer, composer, or lyricist for the song. The song Milkshake is produced by Chad Hugo, Farrell Williams, Rob Walker, and the Neptunes, with Hugo and Williams being the lyricists and composers. Kellis is acknowledged as the performer of Milkshake. Additionally, the credits for Energy no longer attribute Hugo and Williams as co-writers of the song. Drama has surrounded Beyonce's upcoming album Renaissance, with singer Kellis expressing frustration over an alleged unauthorized sample. Kellis claims that Beyonce sampled her song Get Along With You from the 1999 album Kaleidoscope for the track Energy without seeking permission. Adding to the controversy, Kellis asserts that all parties involved in the original 1999 single were aware of the collaboration but did not receive any communication about the sampling. The reality is, okay, is that my real beef is not only with Beyonce because at the end of the day, she sampled a record, she's copied me before, she's done it before, so have many other artists. Kellis was alerted to the sample by a fan who tagged her cooking account to congratulate her. However, instead of feeling honored, Kellis was shocked and upset. She expressed her disappointment, stating, My mind is blown too because the level of disrespect and utter ignorance of all three parties involved is astounding. Kellis further emphasized her frustration, highlighting the lack of communication and integrity in the music industry, claiming that some individuals lack soul and deceive everyone involved. According to Tidal, the Kellys track is said to be written by Chad Hugo, Farrell Williams, Rob Walker, and the Neptunes. Hugo and Williams are also listed as lyricists and composers, no mention of Kellis at all. The singer-turned-chef has mentioned in the past that she and Williams are not on the best of terms. She is now alluding to this being the reason why she was left uncredited on Beyoncé's new album. In 2020, Kelly shared with The Guardian that she still hasn't made any money off of her first two albums, the ones she worked on with Williams and his team. I was told we were going to split the whole thing 33-33-33, which we didn't do. Kellis also claimed that she blatantly lied to and tricked by the Neptunes and their management and their lawyers and all that stuff. Chances are she never had credit to begin with, and she was today years old when she found out the facts, unfortunately. Kellis becomes the second artist associated with Renaissance to express surprise about Beyoncé using their work. The enigmatic singer released the track Break My Soul, featuring a sample of Robin S.'s Show Me Love. The credited songwriters are Alan George and Fred McFarlane. Robin S. only became aware of the sample when her son informed her that she was trending. Unlike Kellis, Robin S. took a less defensive stance, expressing gratitude to Beyoncé publicly. In a social media post, she addressed Beyoncé, Jay-Z, and the entire team, thanking them for recognizing her work while she is still alive. Despite the lack of direct communication, Robin S. acknowledged the honor and excitement of the collaboration and expressed anticipation for future possibilities. This highlights a contrast in reactions between the two artists, with Robin S. showing appreciation for the recognition from Beyoncé. Beyoncé is lucky she is who she is because Robin S. and Kellis are claiming there were no official contracts in place. Kellis is going as far as to say, it's not a collab, it's theft. This is Beyoncé's seventh studio album, and her fans have been anxiously waiting for something. That being said, a little more dotting I's and crossing T's would be helpful and less scandalous. Since the drama started, Kellis has posted follow-up videos on IG explaining her point and why she is so triggered. I just heard the record everyone is saying has my sample, but it's beyond this song at this point, she wrote to her followers. This was a trigger for me. Milkshake alone is one of the most licensed records of our generation. I am I'm a creator, I'm an innovator, I have done more than left my mark on an era of music and style that will go down in history. Kellis shared that one of the reasons why the industry is so touch is the social climate. There are bullies and secrets and gangsters in this industry that smile and get away with it until someone says enough is enough. So I'm saying it today, I'm coming for what's mine and I want reparations peace. In 2015, Serbian pop star Jelena Carlusa made headlines around the world when she accused Beyoncé of copying her style. Carlusa had previously called out Kim Kardashian for allegedly copying her look. When she came for Beyoncé, the pop star posted various side-by-side -side comparison shots of similar outfits they have worn over the years. Carlusa even wrote on her Instagram, it's called originality. You should try it sometime. 
However, Beyonce later demonstrated a commitment to acknowledging influences and collaborating with iconic figures. In her Renaissance album, Beyonce featured Grace Jones alongside Thames on the track, Move. In a conversation with Vogue, Jones elaborated on her connection with Beyonce, revealing that they had met through her brother's church in Los Angeles, establishing a connection beyond their roles as singers. But now, someone else is doing it and she's letting us know. Ooh. Beyonce. Oh. Now hold on, look, okay? Furthermore, Beyonce collaborated with Madonna on the remix of her single, Break My Soul. This remix sampled Madonna's Vogue, serving as a homage to the queer ball culture that heavily inspired much of the Renaissance album. Beyonce went on to recreate the iconic Vogue rap, paying tribute to several black women in the music industry. This collaborative effort showcased Beyonce's willingness to honor and incorporate diverse influences in her work. She also sent the Queen of Pop flowers with a note, which the Vogue singer shared on Instagram. Thank you, Queen, Beyonce wrote. I am so grateful for you. You have opened so many doors for so many women. You are a masterpiece genius. Thank you for allowing me to sing in your song and thank you for naming the remix. Love always and forever be. Moreover, she strong-armed If I Were a Boy from her debut artist. This Gnome One ballad from Beyoncé's I Am Sasha Fierce was written by B.C. Jean, who was inspired by the idea after a recent breakup. After writing the song with producer Toby Gad, she started shopping the song to labels as her lead single. However, once Beyoncé's team got a sniff of it, they decided to let Miss Carter record her own version. BC was credited as the songwriter, which was bizarre to her considering she didn't intend for anyone else to sing the song. It's an amazing compliment, but I was like, that's great, but it's going to be on my album, she said in 2011, and it can be on my album too, I just didn't realize how it worked. Sounds like someone was taken for a ride. However, BC later clarified that the internet exaggerated claims that her song was stolen. The story is not as bad as everyone's saying it is, she said. It's pretty much the best breakup ever, and the best experience ever and again. It'll be on my album coming out in January. Sounds like she's not telling the full truth, but whatever the case, at least she got a huge check out of the deal. There were allegations that Beyonce allegedly appropriated the song Baby Boy from struggling singer-songwriter Jennifer Armour. In 2003, Armour had sent a demo of her song titled Got a Little Bit of Love for You to Beyonce's record label, Columbia Records. Several months later, she heard Beyonce's Baby Boy on the radio and felt that it bore a striking resemblance to her own composition. Armour filed a lawsuit claiming copyright infringement. However, the legal battle ended with Armour losing the case. The challenge she faced was proving to the judge that Beyoncé had physically heard her song before creating Baby Boy. Without substantial evidence to support this claim, the court ruled in favor of Beyoncé. There were allegations of Beyoncé being accused of appropriating the song Survivor from a producer during her Destiny's Child days. Producer Terrence T. Rob Robinson filed a significant $200 million lawsuit against Destiny's Child, claiming that they stole his song, Glorious, which he had produced in 2000. Robinson had shared the song with Beyonce's father and manager, Matthew Knowles, with the hope that it would jumpstart his career. However, Matthew Knowles allegedly disappeared with the song, and a few months later, Survivor was released without any credit to Terrence Robinson. Robinson expressed his frustration at a news conference, stating that if the alleged theft had not occurred, he would have become one of the most sought-after producers. The outcome of the lawsuit is unclear, suggesting that it might have been settled out of court. Moreover, it is also believed that she lied about writing Crazy in Love. Crazy in Love is easily one of the best pop tracks of the 2000s, and according to Beyoncé, the song was the product of a genius collaboration between herself and producer Rich Harrison. The song came from me actually looking crazy one day in the studio, Beyoncé said at the time. I said, I'm looking crazy right now, and Rich Harrison, the producer, was like, that's the song. According to him, after he played a sample of the track for Beyoncé, she then told him, I love the idea, now write the song. I'll be back in two hours. Although he was hungover, he managed to write the full song and play all the instruments before Bay got back. The only thing she wrote was the bridge, which is hardly the same as writing the whole song. So easy said, no, nah, KP stood up for this Beyonce record. 
And it was, <laughs> what was it? What, the, what, 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 what record was it? Was it? Was it? It's so suspenseful. There were instances where Beyonce faced criticism for misrepresenting her role in the creation of Irreplaceable. In 2008, during a concert, she claimed to have written the song for fellow women. However, the reality is that Neyo, not Beyonce, wrote the song. Neyo clarified in 2011 that he had penned the song for himself, acknowledging that a man singing it could be perceived as somewhat misogynistic and mean. Despite not being the original writer, Beyonce received songwriting credit, as Neyo expressed his willingness to let her take credit, acknowledging her unique interpretation of the song. Irreplaceable went to be so so initially I wrote it to, to sing it myself. I right, did. right. But um I realized in the lyrics of this record that well, first and foremost. In 2011, following the lukewarm reception of her album, Four, Beyonce faced controversy regarding her performance of Run the World at the Billboard Music Awards. Despite the cutting-edge appearance of the performance, it was revealed that both the performance and choreography were directly inspired by Italian pop star Lorella Cuccarini. Facing backlash, Beyonce admitted the influence in an interview, stating, My makeup artist showed me the performance of Lorella Cuccarini a year ago, and it inspired me so much. Surprisingly, Lorella Cuccarini responded positively to the similarities, expressing that she enjoyed them and appreciated the additional attention she received in the United States. She lied about the Stevie Nicks sample in Bootylicious being her idea. That famous guitar riff from Stevie Nicks' Edge of 17 was sampled heavily in this track, and according to Beyonce, it was her idea to use it. It was 2000 and we were on our way to Japan, she said in her I Am Yours DVD. And I came across this Stevie Nicks song, something about this guitar riff reminded me of a voluptuous woman. And I said, I'm gonna write a song to celebrate a woman's curves. Except using the sample wasn't her idea, it was producer Rob Fusari, and he wasn't happy about Bay running around town taking credit. When he saw her on the Barbara Walters show lying about her involvement on the track again, he had enough. I called Matthew, which was a big mistake, he told Billboard. I called Matthew and said, Matthew, like, why? He explained to me in a nice way. He said, people don't want to hear about Rob Fusari, producer from Livingston, New Jersey. No offense, but that's not what sells records. What sells records is people believing that the artist is everything. The scary thing about that exchange? Matthew was right. Last year, illustrator Hajime Sorayama shook things up by posting photos on Instagram, comparing his original artwork to one of Beyonce's tour costumes. Yet, some fans are firing back, saying Sorayama's work itself draws heavily from the 1927 film Metropolis, and what he claims as stolen isn't a unique masterpiece, but a style that can't be owned. Beyonce is being called out by the artist uh, named Hajime Sorayama. You know Hajime Sorayama? He's like uh, a weekend uh, freaking collaborator. Now here's the twist. Beyonce's Renaissance tour is raking in over $500 million. So if she did lift Sorayama's art, why not just slide him some cash? But hold on, there's more drama. The pop star is also playing hardball with a $7 million tax bill from the IRS. Talk about a double whammy. On December 11th, Hajime Sorayama posted a series of photos to his Instagram account, Hajime Sorayama Official. The first slide is a picture from the Renaissance tour featuring Beyonce in a chrome headpiece with small metal spikes sticking out from the side. The second slide is the same image, but on a t-shirt. The third, fourth, and fifth slides are images of Sorayama's artwork, a woman wearing a very similar chrome headpiece as well as a chrome suit of armor. He captioned the photos, Yo Beyonce, you should have asked me officially so that I could make much better work for you as like my man the weekend. The post now has over 57,000 likes and over 3,500 comments, making it both his most liked post and his most commented on post. It's currently unclear if Sorayama is taking any legal action against Beyonce. Distinguishing between inspiration and outright imitation lies in the ability to advance the artistic dialogue. Can one infuse a personal touch? Can creativity be elevated and extended to uncharted territories? Consider Michael Jackson, who took James Brown's shimmy and transformed it into the iconic moonwalk. Similarly, Beyonce redefined Tina Turner's distinctive figure-flaunting costumes and impassioned performances, giving rise to her alter ego, Sasha Fierce. It's about making the influence uniquely one's own, pushing boundaries, and propelling creativity into new realms.
An artist's wellspring of creativity should serve not only to offer insight into their origins, but also to propel the audience towards a curiosity about their future trajectory. Replicating someone else's work without infusing personal perspective or opinion is akin to a knockoff bag from Chinatown, cheap and lacking originality. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to encapsulate my music in time and say like, you know, uh, like it's vintage or something as if I'm not. Even when approached with the best intentions, Beyonce's imitations can come across as uninspired. A more genuine acknowledgement of the smaller artists who contributed to her greatness, both materially and metaphorically, would be appreciated. A friendly suggestion to her creative team, perhaps a lighter touch with the inspiration, modifying elements like wardrobe or lighting could make a significant difference. Ultimately, excessive copying does a disservice to Beyonce herself. Instead of pushing artistic boundaries and fostering growth, she risks becoming a mere amalgamation of others' creativity. In the grand scheme, it's always preferable to be the creator rather than the imitator. Even one of her fans suggested, this has gone on for a long time. Beyonce tried it with Sia and Neo trying to steal credit for songs they wrote, and they called her out for it. Her ego is way too inflated to think she deserves more respect than an artist who writes their own music. She's a performer, period. No one has held her accountable for her shady antics. Another one added, even Neo said that Beyonce would change a word in a song to get songwriting credits. I think Matthew taught her how to be a bully in the industry. Also, Beyonce doesn't write her albums because she can't write them. She doesn't have the most vast vocabulary, which is why she no longer does in-person interviews. One more person wrote, That's why Ashley Everett wasn't on this tour. She wanted a raise, and Beyonce said no, after working with her for almost 20 years. Smm. And to see that Beyonce had the budget for 100 different custom-made costumes for her alone, but not enough to pay your dance captain of almost 20 years is insane to me. Moreover, the allegations also include the replication of an entire music video frame by frame for her song, Spirit, part of the 2019 Lion King reboot soundtrack. Additionally, claims assert that the song itself, Spirit, has similarities to the 1985 Mike and the mechanics hit Silent Running. The wind is Specifically, Beyonce is accused of borrowing extensively from an 18-minute music video created by South African artist Petite Noir, with her version released almost two years later. This has sparked outrage and disgust among many online users who condemn Beyonce's actions as blatant theft. While a portion of Beyonce's fanbase, the Bayhive, has attempted to defend her, asserting that she was offering a gift to Africa, a considerable number of people, especially Africans on social media, are expressing anger and frustration frustration. They are calling out Beyonce's actions as unlawful and condemning her for appropriating elements from African culture while claiming to contribute to it. The controversy surrounding Beyonce's recent work has left many questioning her choices and the authenticity of her artistic contributions. The controversy surrounding Beyonce's alleged copyright infringement has stirred reactions from the Bayhive, with some acknowledging the blatant nature of the infringement, while others attempt to make excuses for her actions. Some individuals, perhaps misguidedly, defended Beyonce by arguing that her wealth eliminates the need for her to steal, despite the fact that accusations of copyright infringement have been made against both Beyonce and her husband Jay-Z in the past. In an attempt to downplay Beyonce's awareness of Petite Noir, one Bayhive member falsely claimed that Beyonce doesn't know the South African artist. This assertion was challenged by individuals who conducted searches, uncovering a 2015 article in The Guardian featuring Petite Noir and mentioning his connection to Solange Knowles, Beyoncé's sister. The article suggests that the Knowles family is familiar with Petite Noir, providing a potential link to how Beyoncé might have come across his work. I was looking for artwork for, for the compilation and I was like, this is perfect. Allegations of not only visual but also musical theft further intensify the controversy. The situation has prompted discussions on social media about the legality and ethics of such actions, with some questioning the authenticity of Beyonce's creative process. The accusations against Beyonce for alleged copyright infringement are indeed serious and have been reported on multiple occasions. The claim that she appropriated copyrighted material from a New Orleans producer's album titled Lemonade mirrors the current allegations involving Petite Noir's work. If these allegations hold true, it suggests a pattern of behavior that extends beyond a single incident. 
Critics and some members of the public have voiced concerns about the ethical and legal implications of such actions, asserting that they demonstrate a lack of creativity and an unscrupulous pursuit of financial gain at the expense of other artists. While some members of the Bayhive passionately defend Beyoncé, attributing her success to hard work and talent, others, as you mentioned, are critical of what they perceive as a pattern of plagiarism. The controversy surrounding Beyoncé's alleged actions raises questions about artistic integrity, accountability, and the consequences of such behavior in the music industry. As with any allegations, it's important to consider evidence and due process before making conclusive judgments. However, if proven true, the impact on Beyoncé's reputation and legacy within the music industry could be significant. While everyone is up in arms, Beyoncé continues to drop promotional content ahead of the album release. If that doesn't read unbothered, then what does? Anyways, that's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.